Today in Roman history and antiquity, 1st century BC Anatolia had many powers, but this video will focus on two main groups, Bithynia and Pontus. However, it goes more into Rome's relations with the former, Bithynia. The last Bithynian king was a pro-Roman ally and led one of the client states. His life had entanglements with the Pontic king, Mithridates VI Eupator, and the Roman Republic. And he participated in the First Mithridatic War. Find out today about the relations between Nicomedes IV of Bithynia and Rome. This is part one of the three part series focusing on Nicomedes and Rome. I will give a quick background on Bithynia before going into the relations between Nicomedes IV and Rome. From the Kingdom of Bithynia, like many other Hellenistic royal members, Nicomedes was interested in medicine. And his rival, Mithridates, was too. Also, it had independent cities and employed the Greek style of warfare, notably the Phalanx. During the 90s BC, the Romans eyed the tension between Mithridates VI of Pontus and Nicomedes IV. The latter sided with Rome, and an example was Nicomedes giving troops to Sulla to drive the Armenians out of Cappadocia and restore Ariobarzanes I. This was a contrast to Nicomedes' father. Nicomedes I collaborated with Mithridates on Cappadocia and Paphlagonia. At the beginning of Nicomedes' reign, there were two attempts to oust him from power by Mithridates. First, he sent an assassin, Alexander, but failed to kill Nicomedes. Second, he used the claimant, the illegitimate son of Nicomedes' father, Socrates Crestos, with the Pontic army, which seceded. During his exile, the Romans mainly held to Nicomedes politically and economically. By 90 BC, the Roman Senate gave Manius Aquilius to return Nicomedes to his throne. Additionally, Based on Appian's account, Sola mentioned the two attempts to dethrone Nicomedes and blamed Mithridates. After Nicomedes returned to his Bithynian throne, the Romans stipulated to pay his debts as a client state. Unfortunately, the treasury was empty and he reached out to his nobles to compensate for the economic stipulation. Also, in 89 BC, the Bithynian army invaded western Pontus and attacked the Pontic coastal cities, specifically at northern Paphlagonia, but the Pontic inhabitants provided no resistance. For the Romans, they forced him to do so out of necessity to meet Nicomedes' obligation. Simultaneously, three Roman leaders led the defense, Manius Aquilius, Quintus Opius, and Lucius Cassius. For Mithridates, he used the situation of the social war of 91 to 87 BC and the Bithynian aggression on the Roman commissioner's behalf to declare war specifically from Aquilius. At the beginning of the first Mithridatic war, Appian claimed that Nicomedes contributed 56,000 troops, 50,000 infantry, and 6,000 cavalry out of 176,000 of a pro-Roman, Roman-led coalition with various Asiatic mercenaries. Unfortunately, Nicomedes lost at the Battle of the Amnias River against Mephrodates and barely escaped with his life. As a result, he lost his kingdom again and fled to Rome. In 84 BC, for the second time, Sulla restored Nicomedes to his throne due to the terms of the treaty with Mithridates VI. One of them was to restore the territorial status quo before the First Mithridatic War. Another Roman official, Julius Caesar, asked for ships to deal with the city of Mount during the Second Mithridatic War, but stayed longer than expected. According to Suetonius and Plutarch, Caesar's opponents derided him as Queen of Bithynia. In 74 BC, Nicomedes IV of Bithynia died with no child, and his will permitted the Roman Republic to gain his kingdom 
as a Roman province. Politically, Nicomedes IV and Rome forged good relations, and he allowed the superior power to give up his kingdom after his death. Economically, while the Romans were coercive to have Bithynia pay their debts, they were willing to give orders to attack Pontus to meet the obligation. Militarily, the Bithynians helped in the First Mithridatic War and allotted a third of the Roman-led army in Anatolia against Mithridates, but probably out of fear. Despite their failure, Nicomedes regained his throne not only once, but twice, an example of the Romans using client states against their enemies. In addition, Nicomedes remained loyal to his senior partner, Rome. In my next video, I will focus on Nicomedes and Sulla. Stay tuned for next Monday at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time.